Mä luulen, että sinulla on maa, mä olen langi ja mamma. Kia ora tato. I'm Leone Samu Tui, and I'm the inaugural associate curator, documentary heritage, Pacific Collections at Tamaki Pangahira Okumo Memorial Museum. I began this role in January 2020. Over the past two years, my job has been to surface, celebrate, and privilege Pacific experiences and indigenous knowledge in and across the vast library and archival collections in Auckland Museum's research library. I use the word surface because often Pacific knowledge holders and key figures have been a few layers deep in documents and not so much attributed on the catalogue record. I use the word celebrate because it is joyful and radical to be able to draw attention to archival treasures that have demonstrated Pacific innovation, creativity, resilience, where these demonstrations have not always been given their dues. And finally, I use the word privilege to indicate that where quite often there are huge gaps of Pacific representation and recorded memory and experience in our documentary heritage collections, my intent is to address this through actively collecting new acquisitions, also through the act of enriched cataloging, and through the act of platforming Pacific voices and experiences now, creating engagement opportunities wherever I can. The documentary heritage collections at Auckland Museum cover photographs, paintings and drawings in the pictorial collection, unpublished manuscript material, ephemera, heritage publications including rare books, pamphlets, newspapers and other serials. So in and across all these collections there may be upwards of 10,000 plus items related to the Pacific region in some way, shape or form. And that's just being conservative. In terms of direct whakapapa, this role can be seen as one of many outcomes from the Pacific Collection Access Project, which ran from 2016 to 2019. PCAP was a rehousing and cataloging project of Pacific treasures in the Ethnology Collection, but which became so much more than that due to the heavy emphasis placed on community engagement all the way throughout. For the first time on such a scale, Auckland's Pacific communities were encouraged to come to the museum, bring their families and connect with the communities their Sina, their Taonga, their Kuloa, their Yao, up close and alongside each other. Sessions with cultural knowledge holders were held to deeper understand our collections. When I began as associate curator last year, I was excited to recreate similar experiences that PCAP had created in terms of open day events for communities with our Pacific Documentary Heritage Collections. And then COVID happened, so we had to rethink that. Hopefully in the coming new year, we can welcome back our communities and conduct these in-depth talanoa around a few of our mesina, but only when it's safe and appropriate to do so. In the meantime, we were compelled, along with everyone else during lockdown, to turn our attention to digital means of engaging with our collections. We got familiar very quickly with the use of Zoom as a tool to host online talanoa, as you can see here. Digitization is a key tool we have in the glam sector to make our tanga, our documentary heritage treasures, accessible. If you can't get to the museum in person, here's the means to access a documentary heritage tanga digitally. For the rest of this talk, I'd just like to reflect on a couple of Pacific documentary heritage uh, treasures and what happened when we took a digital opportunity to surface, celebrate and privilege them. The two case studies I discuss here were also written about in blog form, timed for the corresponding Pacific Language Week's celebration. One of my first undertakings in this Pacific documentary heritage role was to survey all the collections to get an accurate picture of the numbers, as well as the nature of our Pacific archival collections. One thing stuck out to me in the manuscripts collection, because it was this big Bible looking heavy tome I recall seeing before, 
but had initially thought was a book of Whāngongo, or Samoan stories and legends. Its title, Samoa Oliver Vau, was a little bit misleading. I took it out for a closer look one day and asked our Pacific Advisory Group Deputy Chair, Sir Lupe Dr. Falaniko Tominiko, to come in and have a look at it, and he brought his father. Samoa Oliver Vau, or Falupenga Book One, MS 64, that's its full title now in our record, is one of the earliest written records of the Samoan Falupenga, or village salutations and honorifics, compiled by ethnologist, philologist, and former U.S. consul to Samoa, William Churchill. Village salutations are not stories and legends, but they do entail storied references to great feats or almost divine characteristics that certain chiefly titles in certain areas of Samoa were famous for. Having never been formally published, this Tusifat Lupenga takes the form of a bound, annotated typescript, which was presented to Auckland Museum Institute and Research Library by S. Percy Smith in 1922. Churchill provided the names of his Matai sources, along with their tala, their accounts, of village Falupenga. Collaborators and sources frequently mentioned in the text include individuals identified as Tufele, Lapuwe, Mr. Ripley, who was often referred to in the text as Pele, and Manongi Yamanu. For villages on the island of Savai, at least 37 individuals are identified by Churchill as sources of information, including Lawati, Fusa Futula Fai, Silialae, Fufalea Lupo, and Lavea and Utumapu, Fusa Futu. Where Churchill may have been given multiple variations of the salutations for a particular village, alternative accounts are also supplied. Unique to this Tusifat Lupinga manuscript, each page of information is presented in Ngana Samoa, the Samoan language, then immediately followed by Churchill's own translation into English, resulting in the annotated typescript amounting to more than 700 pages. Knowledge of and reference to the Fa'alupenga continues to be a vital part of Samoan culture and oratory, and access to reference texts are in high demand. A digitized book, Ole Tusi Fa'alupenga o Samoa, in the National Library of Australia's Trove database, regularly receives high traffic of monthly visits online, numbering in the thousands, the tens of thousands. It is the same heavy online demand for the digitized Tusifat Lupinga held by our colleagues at Tipapa. By providing online access to Samoa Olivaval, or Fat Lupinga, Book 1, MS 64, our goal is for readers, researchers, and cultural practitioners to have another written variation of this documentary heritage Miasina available at their fingertips and available to compare with these other records. From what I've been able to see on social media, and in local community media is that news of this Tusifat Lupinga has spread far and wide and has been shared a lot. The word of mouth effect is real and according to the statistics gathered thus far there have been several hundred downloads of the digitized Tusifat Lupinga since May this year. I turn now to an example from Niwe. Auckland Museum holds and has digitized an archive of black and white photographic negatives taken in the early 1960s by a New Zealander and World War II vet, Harry Coleman, who had gone to live and work in New Air. There is a beautiful range of subject matter in these images, largely taken in the aftermath of two hurricanes that devastated the island in that time period. Coleman had arrived in New Air in August 1959 to take up a role as a senior clerk in the Public Works Department. Over the next few years, he would go on to supervise the establishment of the Community Development Office, which entailed setting up a regular bilingual newspaper, Tohitala Nui, and organizing a broadcasting station on the island. Harry Coleman was born in 1913 and passed away in 1995. 
a collection of close to 400 of Coleman's photographic images of life in early 1960s New Way was donated to Auckland Museum in the aftermath of his passing. Although there is a short inventory that describes some of the images, our collection records for these images lacked any further information about the people, the places and events pictured in them. Additional information has since been shared about the people and places in the images. These images are wonderful and most people in them identifiable. This is why in 2020 and 2021, during UN Language Week, Auckland Museum posted a few images from the Coleman Archive to the museum Facebook page with a call out asking if anyone could name people in the digitized negatives. This has been highly successful in both years with several hundreds of Facebook user impressions and interactions from the Niuean community in New Zealand, Australia, Niue itself, and across the world recognizing family and friends. People have generously shared their memories of that time or of those people depicted in 1960s Niue. So these have been two very successful examples of what digitized access can do to connect Taonga in our collections with highly active communities who are Facebook savvy, who use social media to connect and maintain relationships with family across borders and all over the world. By making the Tusi Fatlupenga more accessible, more people have become aware of its existence and more aware of the individual Matsai, the chiefs who shared their knowledge with Churchill. By sharing Coleman's archive on Facebook, the images have become a place on the internet for the community to be drawn to, even if only for a few moments. Recently, I learned something fascinating in digital insights relating to the use of Auckland Museum's collections online. Over the course of this year, 2021, of the top 20 publications and manuscript records with the most users and page views on Auckland Museum's collections online, the online database, 30% of the most searched records were for publications and manuscripts in Pacific languages or about Pacific Islands related content. The publication record with the most page views is a Samoan language hymn book from our reserve collection, while the second most frequented manuscript record is Samoa Olevavau, the Tusi Fatlupenga I discussed earlier, found at core number in 64 Samoa Oliver Val is narrowly pipped by users of the database searching for World War II NDDF prisoner of war lists. So why is this so significant to me? It indicates to me that while on-site visitation to the Museum of Pacific Communities might be understandably quiet recently and historically, which we as a museum have been trying to address, there is a lot of activity online and Pacific communities are actively engaging with collections digitally. It gives me some indication of what we should be digitizing in our collection, where it is possible to do so, so that Pacific communities searching for this content can more easily access it. It tells me a lot about what communities value, and no surprises, access to Mersina written in Pacific languages is very highly sought after. There are so many more Pacific documentary heritage stories to uncover, some of which I acknowledge I shouldn't be privy to because it would not be appropriate for me to hold, some of which I won't be privy to at all because of my lack of language fluency. In saying that, there are definitely stories, voices and knowledge in the collection waiting to be encountered, to be surfaced, celebrated and privileged. I don't consider myself an expert, even though that is the premise under which I'm speaking today. I position myself as a facilitator for these taonga to be reunited with their communities, to be introduced to new generations, and to foster memorable connections across time and space. And with that, fakitai te lava and soifua.